Infernape has been synonymous with Gen 4 OU or Gen 4 OU offense uh, since its inception pretty much because here you have this brand new Pokemon in a generation that early on is being characterized by the physical special split and the huge power level uh, thrown around by new items like Life Orb and new attacks like close combat and infernape has all this and more uh, it's also got a swords dance clone uh in nasty plot it's also got u-turn uh it's got a lot of stuff and it has most notably in addition to its uh famous scarm bliss killing stabs uh, it's got an incredible unique speed stat which puts it uh, very much in a tier of its own in terms of outrunning offensive Pokemon and being its own offensive benchmark. So, uh, the images in this will move, by the way. So, uh, Infernape for a long, long, long time was just Gen 4 OU. It was synonymous with the tier. It was one of the metagame's most defining threats. And now, you don't see it as much and some people go so far as to call it unviable. Now, I'll uh, I'll you know spoil it there, and I think I don't do not think that's the case. I think Infernape is still quite good. Uh, matter of fact, the last couple times I can remember using and seeing Infernape, I was thinking this thing is still a threat. Uh, it's just not the automatic uh, metagame destroyer it once was. Uh, and its flaws are not just related to Latias returning to the tier, by the way. Uh, it, it was... these flaws are... I mean, that doesn't help, obviously, but if Latias was the only thing standing in the way of Infernape and viability, then Infernape would you turn out on the Latias, and then it would be pursued, and then that would be that. Just like Infernape uh, used to deal with another enemy, Starmie. So, uh, it def definitely is a lot more far-rooted than just Latias. So, we will have some random Infernape replays in the background. Uh, but they're not really related to anything. I just figured, well, people like when stuff moves. So, uh, I'm not going to be watching them, though, because they're going to distract me. Anyway, so, uh, Infernape, yeah, base 108 speed, incredible stabs... Uh, you know, Scarm Bliss Killer, Wall Breaker, of all sorts. You know, just uh, the classic mix ape. Fire Blast, CC, Grass Knot, HP Ice. Uh, outruns base 100s by a mile. Uh, hits most of the metagame really, really hard. Uh, and then it started developing a little in uh, Heart Gold and Soul Silver uh, because that set uh, is not very good against Latias. So it started running the physical mixed Infernape, which was U-Turn, CC, uh, Overheat, and Mach Punch most commonly. You could throw in like Stone Edge if you wanted, but most of the time it was that set. And then that set switched out uh, Overheat for Flare Blitz and became Choice Band. And then CB8 became the standard. And you had uh, tell, you heard tell of, oh, Nasty Plot, Mix Ape is gonna come back in a big way. Uh, now that the dragons are banned and stall is gonna rise up and and it's true nasty plot ape was a big deal then uh, For a brief time just like in the days of diamond and pearl But then people realized hey this choice band infernape is actually also pretty threatening And then you saw cool stuff like scarf infernape, but basically infernape in some form was quite popular the uh, Classic mix that you can mix and match as much as you wanted People were running HP Electric because uh, Gyarados, especially Rest Talk Gyarados, is insanely popular. You could really do whatever you wanted with Infernape. And uh, some players would go, well, life. what's the most famous way that Infernape gets KO'd? Uh, it's not by another attack, but by its own life orb recoil in conjunction with sand. So uh, some players would go, oh, well, of course, uh, Expert Belt. One player in particular, Philip7086, he was like, you know what? Leftovers. And it made a big difference. It was actually very cool. But uh, here we come to the Infernape conundrum that started getting more actively preyed on by the general player base and that started holding it back. So... Uh, Infernape still doesn't really have counters, but it definitely found some really nice checks. Uh, for example, 
the specially defensive Hippowdon that started popping up on stall, that is a really, really solid check. Because it used to be, oh, well, the Infernape dissects stall because Grass Knot drops Hippo from close to full. And yeah, not so much anymore with that. Uh, it makes it much more easy to pivot around. Uh, and another really big development was the discovery of Nido Queen, which is not a counter, but is pretty much the best thing you can ask for in terms of an early Infernape switch in. Uh, especially because Nido Queen does what no other Pokemon in DPP can do, or commonly used Pokemon, okay? Uh, and with Poison Point, then it actually punishes Infernape's U-turn. Half the reason why uh, Choice Ban Infernape continues to be, or continued to be such a threat, because at first people said, oh, well, CB Ape, well, this, the whole point of this Pokemon is that it switches between its incredible coverage. Why would you limit that with a Choice Ban? People then realize, A, the power is really nice, B, it uh, still manages to make do just by locking into one move, and C, or three, or whichever one I'm on. Uh, U-turn is a really big deal. U-turning around against Stall with Stealth Rock up, nightmarish stuff. Until Nidoqueen enters the picture, and suddenly here you have a Pokemon which does not care about passive damage at all, doesn't care about rocks, doesn't care about sand, uh, certainly doesn't care about U-turn because it resists the move, and what's more, it's not just about withstanding Infernape, it actually punishes Infernape for U-turning with Poison Point 30% of the time. Yikes, to say nothing of, you know, if you catch it switching into a close combat or something. Uh, that was one thing. Another thing is people notice, okay, well, if this Infernape uh, is going to be running a choice band set most of the time, because it really likes that power, then uh, we're going to be stacking Protect, and we're going to be stacking Protect in general, because it's just kind of good. And uh, for more on that, then you can check out my Power of Protect video. But uh, basically, it works on Infern... Er, Infernape is one of the foremost examples of why Protect is so good. You scout its moves, you, you know, uh, force chip damage on it, even if you're not scouting anything in particular, then it's still just a useful thing to have. Obviously, Infernape found ways to fight back against that. Uh, so, what are the most obvious ways of taking advantage of Protect? Well, setup. So, Setup Infernape is one thing. Uh, but another thing Infernape could do is run Slack Off, and there's nothing like having a Jirachi Protect on you. Oh, that Infernape all, that was almost KO'd just slacked off, and now I have to switch around it a lot more, and I'm risking KOs with every turn. So, yes, Infernape uh, can do that. But the conundrum Infernape has is choosing between its, uh, choosing its item and choosing its moveset. And then it's EVs too, and uh, yeah, that conundrum between power and coverage, it can really be a nasty one. Uh, I think that just because it's difficult to choose these things does not make Infernape not viable, Like, because that's crazy. But it definitely is not as automatic as it once was. So the stall team started running lots of Protect. And then, of course, Infernape uh, going, well, okay, well, now I won't run um, choice uh, items, as, or I won't run choice band, so I'll run things like, you know, cool, nasty plot, anti-stall, whatever. And then, uh, once you remove the full power that Infernape was boosting itself with, then you really realize, yeah, inf against these walls, against the Milotics of the world, Infernape really needs all the strength it can get. Uh, because its offenses are great against other offensive Pokemon. Against bulkier stuff, not so much. And nowhere is this more apparent than against defensive Jirachi. Uh, whereas, uh, one of the things that really has knocked Infernape down as Wallbreaker is the prominence of bulky Jirachi. Because bulky Jirachi can take Infernape's hits one-on-one. -on -one. And if your Wallbreaker can't deal with one of the most prominent walls and Rachi one-on-one, -on -one, then that's really not good. I mean, you can say, oh, just throw Lumberry on it or something. It's like, you're, you're missing the point. It's so... Then it's already going... It already has pro power issues when running... Well, not so much when running Life Orb, but it's pretty much the choice between am I going to actually threaten to KO things and run Life Orb and have a survivability of 
none? Or am I going to not run life orb and then start struggling to KO Clefable with close combat? That's a real dilemma that Infernape has, in that this like the mixed wall thing that Jirachi and Clef and even Gliscor do so well. Uh, and then you start throwing in Milotix and uh, whatnot, to say nothing of Latias. Uh, and Infernape has trouble hitting on both sides of the spectrum. Unless, of course, it runs Life Orb, in which case you just protect and switch around on it, and then it has that issue. So. Uh, that's the basic conundrum it runs into. To say nothing of it, I mean, the coverage thing is not really secondary to that. It really is just a matter of getting worn down versus you know, being able to actually threaten to hurt things. So, yeah, uh, that's the short version. And the long version would be like a million hours, and as much as I would love to do that. Yeah, so. Uh, Infernape's survivability is its biggest problem. Getting it on the field, I mean, you could just stack it with U-Turners. It's, and that's exactly why I think Infernape is still a very good Pokemon. You just, it's just really hard for it to find opportunities uh, now when one of the most common Pokemon it would threaten out before in Jirachi, you don't really do that now. So you really have to... Yeah, and picking its item is another massive, massive pain uh, with things like... I mean, Expert Belt is great. Leftover is great. I, this is why I really like status on it, because you really mess up things like Latias. And uh, if Jirachi wants to stay in, you burn that. I, I do like Will-O-Wisp on it. You mess up Milotic, and you get to still run Leftovers on it. So you have that survive, survivability. That's just one example. Uh, but Infernape's classic, you know, mixape days are definitely behind it. Or, if not behind it, then they really have to be wielded well. So, uh, what happened indeed? The answer is really uh, survivability caught up to it. It's the same reason why you don't really see as much uh, mixed Dragonite nowadays. Because rocks and sand... I mean, Infernape is, has less survivability than Mixed Dragonite, even though it has a Stealth Rock Neutrality, just because it also gets hit by spikes, and uh, it's so frail, whereas uh, Jirachi, uh, or uh, Denite at least, can take on uh, Jirachi with, because it has Inner Focus for Iron Head, but it, Jirachi genuinely plans on staying in in 1v1, not a healthy Infernape, obviously, but some form of Infernape, so... It is really sad, though, because I w I, a lot of players are going, oh, well, this is an S-rank Pokemon, and you know that was clearly an exaggeration. And then in classic fashion, now we've kind of gone too far the other way. It's like, oh, this Pokemon is literally less viable than Torterra. It's like, all right, let's calm down. It, it is a flawed Pokemon. It's frail, and it doesn't offer much defensively, but to... Uh, Okay, yeah, the addition of Nidoqueen really hurt it, and then some players were messing around with, like, Nasty Plot. It's never really had to contend with both Nidoqueen and Latias uh, at the same time, because Nidoqueen didn't really exist when Latias was in OU before. But now Nidoqueen itself is also way less common. Uh, underrated, again, in my opinion. But now I think Infernape has a really easy time slapping on... Um, U-turn and punishing the Latias that think it's free and I don't know the uh, EVing it is a problem though because if you don't run life orb then it is going to have power issues just do some damage calcs with various forms of close combat against Clefable and you will see where the issue is and choosing the item and whatnot that's why I, I think the most consistent is uh, some form of like lefties U-turn mock punch that will generally get the job done against Lotties. You have that mock, all important mock punch for things like DD Tar and uh, Agility Empoleon, which actually gives uh, Infernape some form of defensive utility. That's huge. So if I were to run it and not delve into weird status experiments, it would definitely be like fire, close combat, U turn, mock punch. But that's the thing. Then you want to run like. <laughs> uh, you want to run overheat, but overheat without life orb. Or, you know, some form of boost is just not going to be that strong. You're barely threatening bulky Jirachi at all. And, uh, and if you run just 
a physical fire move only, then it's still not going to be that strong, even without a, even with max attack investment, just because Infernape's attacking stats are not that impressive. And then, of course, you have the whole, oh, it's actually walled by Skarmory thing if you do that. So the, the choice between... Uh, some players have been, including myself, have been thinking, okay, how low can we lower Infernape speed? Because as the metagame got bulkier and uh, more stall-oriented, then that whole plus speed, um, max speed, base 100 thing, that very much became a thing of the past. Like, no one cares if your Zapdos or your Superachi is timid max speed, because that's going to do absolutely nothing against bulky teams. So, uh, with that in mind, then Infernape can follow a similar path where it doesn't have to run that 330 speed that gets it the jump on base 100. And when you actually can invest more in those offensive, including going plus special attack or plus attack, which I'm a big advocate for, then you actually start getting dangerous. So this is the kind of adaptation Infernape needs. Obviously, and it's uh, easier to cover the base 100s other uh, elsewhere in your team than to cover the wall break the walls that Infernape is supposed to be wall breaking because that's why you're running Infernape in the first place to be a wall breaker so uh, I definitely like uh, plus special attack or just lowering the speed on a plus speed Infernape and just giving it more EVs in both stats it, it is a pain to calc for sure so uh, if you're wondering you know why don't I see Infernape now you know what happened the answer is well, a lot of uh, Nita Queen definitely hurt, and you know Milotic becoming more popular. But it's not one Pokemon as much as uh, the disparity between you know its need for power and then you know uh, how it makes itself vulnerable to being choice locked, or it, how it either becomes vulnerable to a choice lock, or it becomes vulnerable to passive damage with Life Orb, or it becomes vulnerable to not actually KOing stuff. And for a Pokemon as frail as Infernape, whose job is KO stuff, then yeah. Now, obviously against offensive teams with T-Tars and Heatrans and, you know, frailer Pokemon without a ton of bulk investment, then this is not really a problem. <laughs> because uh, against those, then Infernape shines. But it's, uh, it's, the bul it's the bulkier direction the DPP metagame has headed in for a long time. And Infernape's inability to threaten to find a happy medium between in being able to threaten those bulky teams while still being without be being able to threaten those bulky teams without opening up an avenue for its own exploitation uh being either choice lock or you know immense vulnerability to passive damage uh, i think there are some d cool ways to get around it like if you're running a Rain Dance Kingdra uh, along, on a team alongside Mixape, then that's fine because if you only have Life Orb and not also Sand, then yeah, that'll uh, work perfectly. Stuff like that. But it's definitely something you you get just slap Infernape on a team and go, yeah, this will work fine. Of course, you also don't want to sleep on Infernape because that's a good way of making sure you get punished for it. I think naturally, Stahl is naturally good against it, but because of how strong Latias is in the metagame, but I also think that a lot of players are forgetting that a lot of the popular Stahl teams are five Pokemon spanked by Infernape plus Latias. So it, they are also just ripe for getting a uh, you know, exploited in their own way. It, it, it is very much a two-way street because, yes, Infernape can easily just do nothing, but Infernape can also take over games. But it is more of a Pokemon you have to actively work to get the most out of. You're definitely not going to be autopiloting to free wins with Infernape right now. Uh, or for a while, actually, because I don't like the right now... Uh, ideology very much because it again this is pre latias these issues were already very very much in place the whole oh well i can protect on this infernape because either you know it's choice and i scout it or it's not choice and it ko's itself in two seconds with life orb and sand or it's neither of those things but then it doesn't have actually have the power to ko me and uh 
you know, four move slot syndrome is another thing entirely. But that's actually, you know, four move slot syndrome was the only thing for anybody to deal with. That would be just fine. Uh, because uh, that's something it can get around, you know? Like, it can generally do that whole all-purpose thing. Like, it doesn't really need anti-Gyarados coverage, for example, if you can just U-turn on it. That's why U-turn was such a staple on uh, its sets. Why it abandoned classic mixape to begin with. Because it loved uh, U-turning so much. Because it's such a threat. But then it, be it kind of had that whole Flygon thing. Where uh, it's... Where how mix... Or sorry, Scarf Flygon became so synonymous with U-turning. That people were like, oh, just going to U-turn. So I can stay in with my Heatran and dumb stuff like that. Where you know, the best... Uh, the best way to get something out of Mixape is, or, or Infernape is to, con it, the set shouldn't be automatic. So I think now is the perfect time for players to start experimenting with uh, some for new forms of Infernape because the potential is all there. It's, th first of all, the uh, most dangerous Infernape is the one you don't expect. <laughs> I mean, this is a Pokemon that for years you were like, oh, well, I know an Infernape's coming, but it's also going to rip my team to shreds, and I really wish we had old shoddy and PO logs and ways to animate them because those were things of beauty. Uh, but yeah, Infernape was just a terror for so, so, so long. And it, honestly, it wasn't until uh, Life Orb was realized to be kind of the worst item because... If, you know, unless it's on a Magic Guard poke, then you kind of want your opponent's offensive Pokemon to be carrying Life Orb. That makes them easier to deal with. And, you know, without Life Orb or Choice and that whole conundrum that we've mentioned 600 times within the Fernape. But, I mean, all the possibility in the world is there. It's, I think, uh, I was thinking of messing around with some, like, charcoal on it or something. Just for neutral hits against things like Rotom. Um, but yeah, it, Infernape is crazy. I, I I would definitely call it underrated, which is funny because in, underrated has never really been something you could say for Infernape before. But it, yeah, it's it's very strange because I it, we've gone. It's I guess it's not really strange as much as just how the player base tends to view Pokemon nowadays, where they're either the king of the metagame or literally unviable. And I think um, there's just so much out there waiting for... I mean, some players have talked about oh using Blaziken instead because of its higher offensive stats, and it has knockoff. And honestly, I kind of like that idea. Uh, but at the same time... Infernape having U-Turn and Mach Punch and that speed stat, I mean, yeah, so some places to start now that we, now that we know the issues that, inf that pl have plagued Infernape's descent from OU King to, you know, literally unviable apparently, ah, come on guys, uh, so Leftovers is definitely the place to start. Plus, you know, making it slow. I don't know how slow, it, that really depends on your team, but I've definitely dipped into the 290s, if not lower, honestly. Uh, now, with the resurgence of Mixed Flygon, then that might be something you might want to reconsider. But you also can just incorporate that... Uh, elsewhere into your team. Now, obviously, Mixed Flygon is tough to deal with, so that might not be the easiest thing in the world. But, again, Infernape is not supposed to do everything on its own. And when you try to craft the perfect... And this is another thing that I think people forget. When you try to craft the perfect Infernape moveset, then it's not like where you just slap on the uh, classic Mixape like you used to, and that did all the work for you. Now, I think there is no go-to Infernape uh, moveset because a lot of it depends on your team. Like, if you don't, if you have DD Tar and, and Agility Napoleon covered, then yes, ditch Mach Punch. You would love to have something else that you could be using. Uh, you know, if Latias is already something you're targeting hard, maybe you don't need U turn as badly. Stuff like that. I, I have to imagine U turn is going to be, you know, the 
Maybe not the most prioritized move after it stabs, but yeah. But yeah, work in that will o wisp. Work in. <laughs> I think I, I tried toxic once or twice. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying you have to go full status with slack off and whatever, but I mean, Panamaxis used to uh, get some good use out of that. And now is a great time for it. Taunt, will o wisp, slack, uh, close combat. That sounds like a pretty nasty set, honestly. So. Yeah, uh, it's uh, definitely a challenge to get that. You have to want that. Uh, you want that special fighting move for the most, or sorry, special fire move for the most part, because you uh, don't want Gliscor and Skarmory unnecessarily ruining your day. But hey, there's so much out there. Just fire blast, CC, U turn alone is already going to be good. So, and let's assume that you have like a Mach Punch Breloom or something, so you don't need uh, Mach Punch on your Infernape, which is already pretty nice. That's already pretty luxurious. So, you know, you can throw in Will-O-Wisp in there, and that cover that even covers things like Swampert and Gyarados, uh, to say nothing of how it helps you beat up on Latias. Uh, yeah, I, I generally think U-Turn Wisp is my go-to. It's... Uh, but you can also throw in Grass Knot, obviously, just for that increased coverage against something like Hippo. Oh, will o also ruins Gliscor uh, more nicely. Yeah, I, I don't know. You can uh, throw in a boosting move or something. You can throw in Taunt just to prevent stuff from recovering. Honestly, especially with how slow bulky Latias goes. Uh, you attack it, you taunt it, you U-turn on it. That sounds fantastic. I would... That sounds really nice, actually. And I don't think it needs to run leftovers either. I used to really... And again, this is why I think the best Infernape set might be a thing of the past. The best Infernape set might just be a you know, something that you decide for your team. But, uh, for example, I used to really like uh, offensive wishing Jirachis. Not wish call mine, but like wish U-turn uh, sort of thing. And I thought those were really cool on offense. They really tied those kinds of teams together, kind of like uh, the dude's rug tied his room together. And since that's the perfect analogy to use, because you manage to do stuff like bring back a Dragonite, which would otherwise be knocking on death's door, and actually, you know, to use a current gen analogy, uh, I'm going to go with Oris because that's as current gen as I get. <laughs> but uh, think of how ridiculous Mega Metagross is early throughout a battle, and it's getting peppered with, you know, chip damage and little hits all over. And then you healing... I don't know why more people don't do this. Uh, and that's what I love to do. Healing Wish Mega Metagross. A full health Mega Metagross near the end of a battle is so unfair. And that's kind of what it felt like to wish pass with the U-turn Jirachi and offensive teams. You know, helping out things like Zapdos. That was another one. Helping out Zapdos so it doesn't matter if Stealth Rock goes up. It's still going to be healthy and attacking instead of roosting. Uh, and Infernape is one of the great beneficiaries of this. So... Something like that, so you don't need leftovers. You can run, you know, fist plate. Uh, I liked fist plate uh, if you're going uh, U turn mock CC, uh, just to get the most out of that mock, and uh, of course make CC as threatening as possible. And with uh, when you have that fist plate boost, then maybe you can drop a little bit of attack EVs and then get a bit more special attack, so your overheats are melting Gliscors and Rotoms more efficiently, things of that nature. Um, yeah, and that's just one idea. Or maybe it's more efficient to do it the other way around with charcoal. I don't know. I haven't done that math. But the possibility is there. So uh, I guess the purpose of this video is, yes, Infernape is no longer the threat it once was. But at the same time, the people who are saying this is basically a you, you Pokemon are out of their minds. Uh, so I'm encouraging the masses to get out there and use some find some good new use for infernape i remember i built at least one infernape team this year for spl and i really liked it and last year too and nothing has really changed so much between this year and last year in terms of the greater dvp metagame and i thought infernape was really good then and you know underrated even and 
not much has changed. So then it was good, good now. I, th I saw a couple, like one or two other people using it, and it was really nice. So yeah, I, I've said my piece. I'm uh, going to start repeating myself if I don't stop. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, Infernape rules, even though it's fallen on some hard times. And uh, get out there and make some use of it. And make some use of Blaze again too, because I'm fine with that. But yeah, Infernape rocks, and I will see you all next time.